Now we need to continue our examination of some information or possible answers you were given after quite a degree of pushing or pressing on your part as to, as to the issue of or your belief that there is in fact no law. Yes, absolutely correct. Without consent. Well, the, our belief in the law is what gives the law the power. The law itself doesn't exist. And what's interesting about it, if I would say I'm living in the state of Queensland, okay, that sounds interesting. Now, on the other hand, if anybody asks me, what state I'm in? I say, well, I'm not feeling very good. My, my, my state at the moment isn't all that good, you know. So, state means a state of mind. You can never be in the state of Queensland. It's a deception. So, the state versus whoever. You, the, the Crown Corporation, the state versus whoever. That is a state of mind. That state cannot exist in reality. And I think on some occasions, if not on many occasions, when a bluff has been called, whether the bluff was from a police officer or a judge or a magistrate, mm. in some instances, or perhaps on many occasions, they have withdrawn or backtracked or retreated quite quickly when dealing with a person who knows once the fraud is exposed or the bluff is exposed, all they can do is backtrack. They will never ever admit it. They will never ever say we've been wrong, we're sorry. They will always vacate and leave. And it's up to you to get closure. They will never fess up. They will withdraw charges yes. rather than... Yeah, correct. The matter therefore never goes to court. No, no, that's correct. There is, without mentioning any names, there is a female researcher in Western Australia who I've had a number of conversations with over recent years, and she's quite knowledgeable. And she often talks about the difference between a matter in court being dismissed, dismissed and discharged. Yes. A dismissed matter means it was dismissed. The debt, the debt has been forgiven. And a discharged matter means there is actually no more record of the matter in court. Yep. If your matter is dismissed, it, or it went. the records show it went to court, but it was dismissed. Yes. Discharged, it went to court, there's no record whatsoever. Correct. Yep. You do understand that concept? Yes. And the yep. difference? And the difference, yeah. Good. That's correct. So if we get back to the document, which means, uh, you know, part of the reply that I got, we stopped with... Uh, where they said, learn how commerce works and how to operate within it. Thirdly, because you made someone aware of the fraudulent crimes of someone else, does not ever make them responsible for not interceding for you. Which I agree. If you are a private person or a private individual, as you claim, then you should know that no one can speak for you or, you, or defend your rights. Interestingly enough. Would this apply to a person who therefore goes from the public to the private yes. and therefore cannot rely on police, public hospitals, no. public education, or free lawyer, education? Or a lawyer for that matter. You need to do it yourself. You see, because in law what it means, if I have somebody representing me in, in Black's Law and all these dictionaries, legalese language, it means that they're representing an idiot. Which is interesting, because when Australian government solicitors have appointed somebody to act on behalf of the Crown, in legalese it means the Crown is an idiot, which is correct, which is quite interesting to look at it that way. So if you're represented by anybody, it simply means that the guy that appointed the representative is an idiot and is incompetent to handle his own affairs. So to, for us to come out of idiocracy or being treated as idiots, we have to present our affairs or, or be our own selves. If you are continuing, then you have to first check to see if your filings to become a private individual were done properly. Wow. And if they were, then you need to be certain that you obtained the debt notes to whatever account 
that is still being used. If you have obtained the debt notes, did you become the holder in due course over them? Basically, where did you go wrong when you did your process? You are still being treated and recognized as a public individual that has got privileges and not rights. That's very interesting. So, obviously they went on a bit about what I, I wouldn't say I accused them of it, I just told them of certain crimes and here they backpedaled a bit and said, you know, no, 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 it wasn't me, it wasn't me. But yeah, let's look at it. Um, sorry you did not get the answers you were looking for. So they admit. They didn't answer anything that I asked them about. They, they just gave me a solution. Perhaps you should think about being less vague with your questions when you discuss this in the future. You want to take control of what has got your debtor name, debtor in all caps, on it. Yet you don't want to operate within the system that is in place so that you can resolve any of your legal problems. Yes, government entities have manipulated the system in order to line their pockets. However, it can be undone. Liquidating accounts that were put in place of legal tender will not do that. The only way to accomplish what you believe to be the only answer would be to take the creation of a new government worldwide or simply for an individual to remove themselves from the system as the debtor. Well, I would say the latter option is going to be a lot easier than creating Absolutely. a new worldwide power system or, or system of rulership or government. Correct. So in commerce and in law, which is, commerce is the bloody law, there's debtors and creditors. Done deal. You're either the one or the other. Yes. And therefore, when you're going to court, when you're presenting yourself, when you're doing whatever, you walk through those doors as the guilty party. End of story. You're the debtor. You wake up on a ship, a vessel on, in commerce, and the captain wakes up and he's got a hangover. He's not feeling very well. And it doesn't matter what you do, whether it was right or wrong. He's going to make you do stuff. That's, it's just going to make you do it. Whether, whether you did it or didn't do it, it's completely irrelevant. Because this is where you are, because you walked onto that ship as the debtor and you took it for granted that whatever the captain tells you to do, you will do because you're on his vessel. And that means to get off the vessel, you should have never ever got onto the freaking ship. And this is where we are. So we enter the system from birth as the debtor. Yes. With a surname being the debtor in yes. the account and the house of the surname or the office of the surname being the debtor. And yet when the birth got registered and you get your second birth certificate, which is the creditor in commerce, which is the date of registration of the name the creditor office got created, but we never applied for that particular certificate. And we didn't know that it existed. We remained as the debtor without yes. knowing that we had the second yes. option, which was the crucial, critical part. Absolutely. So we get born as the debtor and we die as the debtor. We never, ever become the creditor. And when we die, whatever is left over in our trust, because we have never claimed it at any no. point during our life, it flows on to the party who initiated perpetrated the initial fraud correct thank you correct thank that's you that's exactly what happens so they say to me that well all statutes and regulations are based off of contracts statutes and regulations are based off of contracts they are stating it right there and those contracts are in fact voidable voidable or avoidable voidable voidable they can be declared, be declared null and void the first step would be to remove yourself from being an employee of the corporate form of government. So we're all government employees, as far as they're concerned. Okay. You have your own understanding of being defeated, when in reality it appears that you are giving up 
because you understand the corruption, which we all do, without understanding how to obtain any remedy within the system. So there is a remedy within the system. We just don't know about it. It's just been concealed. Unfortunately, there is no way to get out of it without going through it. There are ways to operate within the system of commerce without being personally indebted to it. As for common law, yes, there is still common law. However, you need to seek your remedy administratively and not publicly. So this tells us that all the common law things we all want to fall back on has got nothing to do with the private sector or living in the private. And that's it.